The stereochemistry of a reaction can give us new insights and allow us to test mechanistic hypotheses. In this webcast and the webcast to follow, we're going to want to look at issues of stereochemistry dealing with the addition reactions. Let's begin by recognizing that for addition reactions, there are two stereocenters that could be introduced. The sp2 hybridized carbon of the reactant will transform into a pair of sp3 hybridized carbons, and because of their adjacency in what used to be the double bond, there's a very good chance that the stereochemistry at one center will be somehow related to the stereochemistry at the second center. And throughout this webcast and the ones that follow, we'll want to try to understand the relationship between one stereocenter and its neighbor. In describing the stereochemistry of addition reactions, we like to use the word face, and by face, we mean the planar set of atoms that make up the double bond, including each of the atoms that are directly attached to the carbon-carbon double bond. Those atoms comprise a planar set of atoms that we call a face, and we're going to be concerned with the elements that add across that double bond. Do they come in from the same face, or does one atom come in from one face, say this hydrogen here, and the other hydrogen come in from the opposite face? We'll also be concerned whether addition takes place from the top face, the face that we can see that's exposed, or as this schematic illustrates, from the bottom face, the underside of that planar set of atoms. For hydrogen addition to double bonds, the most common mode of addition is syn addition, meaning that the two elements of hydrogen will add to the same face. Syn means same face. That face could be the top face, as is shown here, so that when the hydrogens add to those positions, we see that they are on the same side of that yellow plane. Here, the yellow plane was the face, and now after transformation, those sp3 hydrogen atoms we see are both above what was the face of the double bond. Both are on the same side. Same side means syn addition. For the first diagram, the addition takes place to the top face, the face that's exposed, the one that we can see, and we can clearly see the hydrogens above that plane. In the example at the bottom, we can see that the hydrogens come in from the underside. Both of them are below the yellow plane, which used to be the face of the double bond. So both of these are syn addition. The first is syn addition to the top face. The second is syn addition to the bottom face. What's the result? The result is that we have created two new stereocenters in doing the addition reaction. The products that we've obtained by top face and bottom face addition are related to each other as in antiomers. To summarize what we've learned in this example, syn addition, addition to the same face, defines the relative stereochemistry of those adjacent stereocenters. Whether that syn addition takes place from the top face or the bottom face will determine which of the enantiomers result. Under normal circumstances, the addition is equally likely from the top and bottom face, meaning that we'll end up with equal amounts of both enantiomers. In other words, we'll end up with a racemic mixture. Having seen what syn addition looks like, now let's find an example of anti-addition. Normally, the addition of hydrogen to a double bond favors the syn product, but it's possible to find a set of conditions in which the anti-product is favored over the syn. Since you can see we still end up with some of both modes of addition, we'll call this reaction stereoselective. The selectivity favors the antiproduct. What we want to understand isn't how these conditions bring about this preference, but rather just understanding that the stereochemistry that we see resulting, the relative stereochemistry between the adjacent centers, differs for the anti-mode compared to the syn mode. In the anti-mode, the two substituents that were attached to the double bond are opposite in their configuration. One is wedge up and the other is wedge down. Whereas in the syn mode of addition, you can see that the two substituents are pointing in the same direction. In the way it's drawn here, both are pointing down. Let's find out how that comes about. The top example shows anti-addition 
you can see that one hydrogen atom comes in from the bottom face and the other comes in from the top face. When we draw in those implied hydrogen atoms, you can see why the relative stereochemistry at those two centers places one of the methyl groups down and the other one up. For syn addition, both hydrogens will enter from the same face, so that when we draw in the implied hydrogen atoms, we can see that the two substituents, the methyl groups, will be pointing down. And so, you should be able to look at a product and the relative stereochemistry between the adjacent centers and decide whether the mode of addition was syn or anti. In the next webcast, we'll use this result to look at the mechanism of the addition of bromine across a carbon-carbon double bond.